Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on you, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. There are lots of ways to save money. You still hear about people tucking it away under mattresses, putting it away in a favorite piggy bank or a cookie jar. But there's a much better way to save, and that's by buying United States savings bonds through the payroll savings plan. It's the real easy way of saving money. Your employer automatically sets aside a certain sum of money each payday, any amount you name. It's all done before you get your pay, so in that way you never miss it. When enough is accumulated, you receive a Series E savings bond, automatically too. There's no bookkeeping or budgeting problems for you. It's also the smart way of saving. Series E savings bonds pay back $4 for every three you put in, even more if you hold them past maturity. Yes, there are many ways of saving money. But today, while you're thinking about it, join the 8 million other Americans who find it easier to save through the automatic payroll savings plan. This message is brought to you as a public service. Late one spring afternoon, King trotted down Front Street toward the Northwest Mounted Headquarters. It was nearly time for Sergeant Preston to be through with work for the day. As he was passing the Palace Hotel, a big red-headed man stepped off the board sidewalk directly in front of him. King started to go around him, but the big man grabbed his harness. Yeah, where do you think you're going? King stood perfectly still. He didn't like the tone of the big man's voice. Still, most of the people in Dawson knew him, and he was used to their attention. Come here, Smitty. You'd better let go of that dog. Why? This is the kind of a dog I should have. Yeah? Well, it just happens that he belongs to Sergeant Preston. He'd sell him if the price was right, I'll bet you. As soon as I make my pile, I mean to buy him. Yeah, it'll be a warm December when that happens. When you have enough money to buy a dog like King. It won't be long now. And even if you could buy him, you'd never be his master. Why not? Because he's a one-man dog. You'd never be able to make him forget the sergeant. That's what you think. I've trained dogs before. I know how to do it. How? Treat them rough, that's how. Show them who's boss. While still holding tight to King's harness, the red-headed man made a move as if he were going to twist King's ear. Red Morgan, it's... take your hands off that dog. Who said that? I did. Me. This color. You're not man enough to make me. Is that so? Well, take off your coat and we'll settle the question here and now. That suits me. As Red released his hold on the harness and started to take off his coat, King ran up the street toward headquarters. A crowd gathered around the two men. Red Morgan was the taller and perhaps weighed a little more. But there was no denying that Biff was a powerful man, too. This was to be a battle between giants. Are you ready? I'll show you. Red's ham-like fist crashed against the side of Biff's jaw, and Biff staggered back, but he recovered quickly. From then on, they stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and slugged away at each other. The crowd yelled as a solid blow caught Biff in the eye. Biff retaliated with a straight left to Red's nose. Still, neither of the men would give ground. For five minutes, they traded punches. And then one of Biff's crashing rights dropped Red to the ground. He was up in a second, ready to charge again. But not another blow was struck. At that moment, Sergeant Preston pushed his way through the crowd and stepped between the two men. That's enough. Let me ice. That's, that's enough. Who started this row? Biff, was it you? No, sir. What's your name? Red Morgan. Did you start it? No. Nah. You're new here? Yeah. You're not, Biff. 
You know the force won't stand for this sort of thing. Well, the situation at the time called for something. Never to... mind the explanations. I'm warning you, if it happens again, you'll both get three days on the wood pile. Now clear out before I change my mind. Yes, sir. Biff picked up his coat and hurried across town to the cabin he shared with his 14-year-old son, Tim. Tim took one look at his face when he opened the door, and then started for the kitchen. Sit down, Pop. I'll get the first aid kit and a piece of steak for that. Well, it wasn't my fault, Tim. Did you say it was? When's the funeral? Huh? What funeral? The other guy, the crow. Oh, there'll be no funeral. Sergeant Preston, step between us. He's a brave man, Bill. He is that. It was Red Morgan I was fighting. Do I know him? Oh, you might remember him from Frisco. He fought a few good heavyweights down there. But, of course, he wasn't in my class. Of course not. You were the number one challenger. If Corbett had ever given you a fight, you'd have been the champion of the world. That's true. It was only politics that kept me from it. Yes. Hold it safe, your eyes. I'll wash those cuts. Yeah. Timmy boy, you do believe I've been champion, don't you? Of course. Well, I'm thinking it isn't too late. Yes, you promised. And I'm not forgetting my promise. I came up here to go prospect. Sure, I know, I know. It just happened that a wonderful opportunity has come along. What's that? Tex Richards is to hold a heavyweight tournament at the music hall. And there's a prize of $200 to the winner. We don't need money. We have plenty of supplies. Now, that isn't all the $200. The winner will receive a belt emblematic of the championship of Dawson. And what's more, he'll appear in the show at Music Hall, challenging all comers. A hundred dollars a week, Timmy. For how many weeks? Why, all summer. Or until somebody knocks him out. And no one would knock me out, Timmy. It would be a steady job. Did it mean breaking your promise? Boy, boy, what's the matter with prize fighting anyway? You know how it used to be. Oh, but that's all over. I don't hang around cafes anymore. You would if you were fighting. What's the music hall but a cafe? It's a theater, a legitimate theater. There's no future in it, Tim. Think what it would mean if we we struck it rich this summer. Yes, and think what it would mean if we wandered from creek to creek all summer long and found no gold at all. There'd be nothing to do but go back to Frisco empty-handed. Now, if I were champion of Dawson, I'd have a steady job. And it's you who would take charge of the money every week and save it for us. Think how much we'd have. You can't be sure of winning the tournament, Biff. Oh, can't I, though? Red Morgan's the toughest man I'd have to beat. And I came very close to that this afternoon. Well... It's settled, then. I'll hand in my entry this very night. I'll see who it is. Biff. Biff, are you sure you told me the truth about that fight? It's Sergeant Press. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, why aren't you fellas and girls out at the ballpark these days, watching those home runs walloped into the grandstands, eating peanuts, popcorn, and hot dogs? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. All over the country, kids 12 years or younger are seeing major or minor league games free. All you do is bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you get your free baseball ticket immediately inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat, Quaker Puff Rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You'll find two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Pack O' Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. So be guest of your favorite team at the ballpark. Rush to the store with your mom and grab free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Pop Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or... Quaker Pack O' Ten, which has two free tickets. The more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals you get, the more free baseball tickets you get. Now to continue. Tim opened the door of the cabin for Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston? Hello, Timmy. Is your father home? Yes. Won't you come in? Fine. Hello, Jane. Oh, oh, oh. On your mind, sir. You, Biff. Now you can rest assured there'll be no more fisticuffs for me on the public streets of Dawson. It wasn't until after you'd left that I found out how it started. Why, the overgrown bully was about to twist King's ear. So I've heard. I want to thank you for stopping him, Hayes. No thanks needed. I'm as fond of King as you are. He's a good dog. <laughs> I'm very grateful. And I'm happy I can return the favor. Now there's no need. This is just a little advance information. 
Dave Humphrey stopped in at the office about an hour ago. He staked a discovery claim. A good strike, Sergeant? Dave says so. The word will get around town by tomorrow morning and there'll be a rush. But if you two start this afternoon, you can stake right next to Dave. Number one, above or below discovery. Well, now, Sergeant, Timmy and I have decided... It's Challenger to... Creek, not far. On horseback, it shouldn't take more than three hours to get there. Challenger Creek? Our claim would be Challenger number one. That's you, Bill. It's a sign. A sign will be lucky. Dave found gold. There's no reason why you shouldn't. I'm starting for the creek right now. To stake a claim? No member of the force is allowed to do that, Biff. No, the inspector wants someone there to keep order when the rush starts. We'll go with you, sir. Now, wait, Timmy. What about the heavyweight championship of Dawson? A bird in the hand. This is the bird in hand. Challenger number one, Biff. It's a sign. It's a chance to make a fortune. This is what we came up here for. Please, Biff. Well, I suppose there's no harm in staking the claim. We'll pack our saddlebags and get our horses from the livery stable, Sergeant. We'll meet you at the bridge over the Klondike in 15 minutes. I'll be there. Come on, James. Ho, 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 ho! And so it happened that Biff Collins staked Challenger number one above Discovery. The following morning, a tide of men poured out of Dawson and up the Klondike Trail to the new creek. By sunset, every foot of the creek had been staked from source to mouth. And among the men who arrived too late were Red Morgan and the ferret-eyed Cockney known as Smitty. I'm going back to Dawson and win that tournament. I'm staying here for a while, Red. It just might be a chance I can latch on to one of these claims. During the week that followed the rush to Challenger Creek, the men who were lucky enough to stake claims registered them and went to work clearing the ground of the surface moss, mud, and sand, preparatory to sinking their prospect holes. In Dawson, the highlight of the week was Tex Richards' heavyweight tournament. The winner was Red Morton. And on the night he won the championship, Smitty escorted him from the ring to his dressing room. So you come back from the creeks to get on the gravy train, huh, Smitty? What gravy train? The one I'm running. Look, two hundred dollars. From now on, I get a hundred a week just to appear at the music hall once a night and offer to meet all challenges. When I find one, I'll pick up more money in side bets. I'll be in the chip before long. Pennies for beggars. Yeah, figures like you. Now hold your horses with that kind of talk. We've always been partners. It's you who wanted to split up. There's been no splitting up. Well, I've been thinking of your best interest all the time. I have an idea, Red. Yeah? I've been watching Biff Collins. He don't like working a claim. He don't like any part of it. And it hasn't made him any easier in the mind to hear about you winning all your matches. Uh, I'll bet it hasn't. Red, remember what I told you about a claim reverting to the crown if it's left idle for more than three days? Yeah. Well, Biff might be persuaded into coming down here and challenging you one night. I beat him. I hope he does come. Oh, it wouldn't be smart to beat him, Red. If he did that, he'd go right back to the creek. But if you let him win the championship... No. Think about it. Let him win. He's a weak-minded sort. The glory would go to his head. He'd stay here to cash in on it. I know the bloke, Red. He'd forget all about his claim. And we'd be up there just waiting to cut his name off the stake and substitute ours. Are you sure the claim's a good one? It's next door to discovery. But has he got any gold out of it? Well, not so far. But that's all in our favor. He's the kind that gets discouraged easily. Uh, I don't like the idea of letting him win. Not for a fortune, Red. Now, listen. I've been talking some more with Humphrey, the guy who owns Discovery. He's down to bedrock, and he's hit a good pie streak. It can't possibly peter out before it reaches Biff's land. I'm telling you, there's a mighty good chance we'd strike it rich on Biff's claim. A hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Think of what you could do with money like that. Think of it, Red. Yeah. You're sure you can get Biff to come back here and challenge me? One little word will do the trick. I'll say that talk's going around that he's afraid of you. Yeah. I'll see him tomorrow. Okay. It's a deal. Good boy, Red. Good boy. The following morning, Smitty made his way along the banks of Challenger Creek to the spot where Biff and Tim were digging. Hello, Biff. How's the work going? Oh, it's you... Uh, gone down nearly 20 feet, haven't you? <laughs> Washing out much gold? Not much so far. We're going to sink another hole further up the bank. All we have to do is hit the pastry. <laughs> sure. It's an awful lot of work digging that gravel, isn't it? A little work wouldn't hurt you. Stow that guff, matey. I've been down in Dawson and proven my mind. Watching the fights last night. Who won the championship? Red Morgan, of course. He did, huh? 
As a matter of fact, I almost got into a fight myself. There were some who wondered why you weren't in the tournament, Biff. And there were some who said it was because you were afraid of Red. Why, that's Spalpeen. Me? I told everybody the truth. That you prefer to earn your money by digging for gold. A lot smarter to do than risk getting your head knocked off. Red Morgan could never do it. Still, there's no sense in taking a chance, is there? Now, don't you pay any attention to what they're saying about you. I'll see you later. Hey, come back here. Keep up the good work, Biff. Is Red taking on our challenger to the music hall? He is, starting tonight. But my advice to you is to forget about it. Uh, Biff stared after Smitty for a moment and then sat down. Uh, Tim started to shovel gravel again. Finally. Tim. Yes, Biff? It's a hard thing to be called a coward. I don't see what difference it makes as long as you know you're not one. It'd be an easy thing to prove I'm not afraid of Red. To go to Dawson tonight and challenge him. Yeah. Want to go, Biff? I do, son. But I won't. If you don't want me to. What if you should win? Why, then I'd be champion. That'd make you proud of me, wouldn't it? I'm proud of you now, Biff. Yeah, I've given you a little right to be. I've been a great talker and no doer at all. This is doing. Working is doing. Challenger number one, I've called myself. Yes, but never a champion. That's always been my own fault. No, Biff. But thanks to you, I'm in the best condition I've been in years. I know I can win. If you do, what about the claim? Well, there's no use kidding ourselves. It isn't much good. There's a pay streak on Humphrey's land. It must cross the border onto us somewhere. Or Peter out on his, which is the most likely thing. Oh, I'm ready to forget about the claim. You, you want to be the champion, don't you, Bill? I've always wanted that, son. Then, then that's what I want, too. Well, good boy. We'll start for Dawson as soon as we get the horses saddled. We'll fight Red Morgan tonight. But Red Morgan already had a match scheduled for that evening. And it was not until the following night that Biff stepped into the ring with him. The fight didn't last long, not as long as most people expected. Red was knocked out in the third round, and Tex raised Biff's hand. A winner and new champion of Dawson, Biff Collins! Congratulations, Biff. Uh, Here's a contract uh, to appear at the music hall. Will you sign it? I sure will, Tex. You won't go back to Challenger, Biff? Challenger? I'm through with that name. Now I'm the champion. Of we'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Bases are loaded. It's the last of the night. The two out. Here comes the pitch. He swings. Oh, it's a hit. Home run. Be right there in the ballpark and see a grand slam home run. Come out to the ballpark this very week as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. It's so easy to get a free baseball ticket. It's right inside a package of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, and Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets in Quaker Packle 10. The ticket tells you the names of the teams and the dates. Don't miss out on the fun another day. Bring the whole family. Remember, no mailing, no waiting. You can get as many free baseball tickets as you want. They're inside packages of Quaker Puff Wheat or Puff Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Packle 10. Get yours right away. Now to continue. It was dark by the time the sergeant dismounted in front of the cabin Biff and Tim shared in Dawson. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Biff. Hello, sergeant. Where's your father, Tim? Why, at the music hall. What's he doing there? He won the championship for Red Morning. He gives an exhibition there every night. If there's a challenge, he fights. What about your claim? We... He's given it up. Given it up? Well, what's happened to all your plans? Don't you remember how you and Biff talked to me the night you staked the claim? You were to go to school and study to be an engineer. Biff was going to buy a ranch in California. I'll be able to work my way through college when the time comes. Well, what about the ranch, son? The home you dreamed of. Is Biff going to give that up just to show off on the stage of the music hall? It isn't showing off. 
He's doing it for me. I don't understand that. Jim. Well, he, he feels that he's let me down. That, that there was a time when he could have made a real name for himself in the ring, and he missed his chance because, well, because he didn't train. He feels that I blame him for that. I don't, of course. Well, I was glad when he gave up fighting, but still, that's why he wants to challenge Red. He wanted me to be proud of him. Fit's a nice guy, Sergeant. I know that. I know he'd do anything for you. We must convince him if he's chosen the wrong way. That's right. Well, it's my turn to try, then. Get your horses and meet me at the stage door of the music hall as soon as you can. All right, Sergeant. Steady, Blackie. Easy, boy. Get up, the sergeant found Biff waiting in the wings backstage at the music hall. Hello, sergeant. Have you come to see me fight? No, Biff, I haven't. Well, I was going to say there probably won't be any challenges tonight. I'll just box a few rounds of flattery. I'm asking you to get out of those tights and into your clothes. What? I'm asking you to get back to your claim on Challenger Creek before you lose it. Why, haven't you heard? I'm through with mining. The decision was unwise, Biff, but it still isn't too late to change it. Dave Humphrey can show you exactly where to dig, where you'll find gold. I'm asking you to go back there tonight and hold your claim. I can't leave Dawson. As long as I'm champion, I'm under contract to appear here every night. Oh, Biff, this foolishness. Foolishness, is it? I'm the champion, and it's time for me to give my exhibition. I can't waste any more time in argument. Quiet! Quiet, everybody. Listen now. Sergeant watched the husky Irishman stride out on the stage to the cheers of the audience. There was no doubt the man was well-meaning, but he was stubborn, too. What could be done to persuade him he was passing up the chance of a lifetime? And there was the matter of the contract to consider, too. As long as Biff was champion, he must... Someone touched the sergeant on the arm. It was Tim. I heard what Biff said, Sergeant. Well, not the needing the horses. First, the champion offers to defend his title... Against any challenger! That's true. He did sign a contract. He can't leave Dawson as long as he's champion. Tim, that's the answer. If he weren't champion, there'd be nothing to keep him here. What? Is there no one in this audience who wishes to challenge Yes, Tex, I do. You, Sergeant? That's right. I'm challenging. But, Sergeant, I'm a much bigger man than you. I still classify as a heavyweight. Do you accept my challenge? Why, well, of course he does. I'll take you to a dressing room. Never mind that. I'll just take off my tunic and my shirt. Get some gloves. It was a fight to be remembered. During the first three rounds, Biff was unable to land a solid punch. The sergeant moved in and out so quickly. And his lightning jab stung even though they didn't really hurt Biff. By the fourth round, Biff had lost his temper. Will you stand still and fight like a man? The sergeant watched Biff's swings growing wilder and moved in closer. It seemed to the audience that he was performing miracles of evasion, ducking, and weaving. Biff's blows missed by only the fraction of an inch, and the sergeant's punches landed solidly from close range. Now they were charged with dynamite, and the big man was rocked. <laughs> time after time. Finally, the sergeant drove a right to the solar plexus. Oh, no. Biff's chin came forward. The sergeant's left met it squarely. Oh, no. Biff's knees sagged for a second, and then he toppled to the floor of the ring. Hey! The winner and the new champion of Dawson, Sergeant Preston! Throw some water on him. You all right, Biff? Yes, sir. You're a better man than I am. Come on, Biff. You're no longer champion and your contract's finished. Will you come back to Challenger Creek with me? That I will, Sergeant. Hurry. We must be there before midnight. The sergeant, Tim, and Biff reached the creek shortly before 12 o'clock. Sergeant, there's somebody pulling up our stakes already. It was Smitty and Red. They started to run when they saw the sergeant. Stop them, King! <laughs> King charged up the ridge and cut off their retreat. The sergeant drew rein beside them. Hold on, Hold on, Smitty. We weren't doing anything wrong, sergeant. This claim hasn't been worked for three days. It's crown property. You're just ten minutes ahead of time, Smitty, and that makes you and Red guilty of claim jumping. Grab a shovel and go to work, Biff. I'm doing that very thing. Uh, you and your plan, Smitty. Well, I'm here to tell you, Biff, that I'll let you win the championship. Yeah. Glory be. Well, I'm here to tell you that a better man than either of us now holds the title. Huh? Who? The sergeant himself. You can challenge him if you want to, Red. After you get out of jail. But as for me, 
I've given up all thoughts of being a champion. And I'll be perfectly content to end up as a millionaire. That will mean work, Biff. I'm ready for it, sir. Believe that, Jimmy. I do, Biff. In that case, this case is closed. Oh, oh, oh! Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There's roaring adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone and never present lust for gold. Now, let's go to another lawless world. The West of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. In our next adventure, Sergeant Preston stands before the desk of Inspector Conrad at Mounted Police Headquarters. Sergeant, do you believe in ghosts? Well, of course not. Why, sir? An old miner named Gideon Fowler thinks he killed his partner. Claims to have seen his partner's ghost. It may have been a delusion, or it may have been a cruel hoax. But Gideon has a bad heart. If the ghost appears again, the shark may kill him. I want you to find out the truth before that happens. I'll do my best, sir. Let's go, King. Oh, 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 oh. What did Gideon really see? Is he the victim of a sinister plot? If so, Sergeant Preston may have to cope with dangers he doesn't even suspect. And he may find his own life at stake. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>